We'll give you fireworks, at least when we talk about China. More signs of weakness in the, the world's second largest economy. Two reports this morning show a slowdown in the manufacturing sector. And this comes on top of recent liquidity problems for banks and a credit crunch for borrowers. Our next guest says it's all adding up to an economic crash which we will see or could see this year. Joining us now, Gordon Cheng, author of The Coming Collapse of China. Gordon, I know the people who disagree with you will say you've been saying this for years and years. Eventually you'll be right, but you haven't been right so far. Why now use the word crash? Are we really there? What we see right now is, of course, these liquidity crises causing confidence problems. You've got debt issues, and with a slowing economy, as we've seen from the HSBC PMI and even the official PMI, it shows that they will not be able to pay back this debt. So I think the fuse has been lit. I don't think there's anything that they can really do right now because of global conditions. Foreigners are not going to be pouring money into China, and that really means that the Chinese economy is going to fail on its own. It'll go into recession. This, is, this played out in the United States in 2007, 2008. We had a liquidity crisis, then we had a credit crunch, and then we had the recession. So if this happens in China, I would imagine the problem for us in the United States is they can no longer purchase our debt, or would they continue to buy our debt? Well, you know, they haven't really been buying debt for the last seven quarters. You have to go back to June, uh, July 2011. Um, their official holdings of U.S. Treasuries was $1.3 trillion. Has it it's, grown? It's, it's the same now. So essentially they have not been buying our debt. And there's no reason to indicate that their unofficial purchases and sales have really deviated from the official numbers. So basically we're fine on our own. But we're fine on our own except that if they go into recession, uh, we export to China. I would imagine they won't be buying as much as our stuff. And they would undercut prices worldwide as they try to revive their economy, would they not? Well, they will be cutting prices. They already have been. But we've got to remember that we last year ran a $315.1 billion trade deficit with China. And, you know, essentially that's a negative for GDP. And I'm not saying we shouldn't trade with them. But on balance, though, it means that trade with China has not been good for U.S. GDP. Yeah, and that, that trade deficit would actually grow if they go into recession because of their undercutting prices. Let me ask you this. There's something you have drawn attention to that perhaps people aren't paying too much attention to, which are these notices about, Chinese consumers not being able to take money out of ATMs. What is this about, and do we believe the official statement as to why? Well, ICBC, which is the largest bank in China, Bank of China, Bank of Nanjing, a number of other institutions basically shut down their ATMs at various times last week. And they were saying this was because of systems upgrades, mm -hmm. but bankers in China have been privately saying that this really is basically to conserve cash. And so this shows how bad the Chinese institutions are. And, you know, it'll be okay today, I'm sure, because it's the first day of the new quarter, and so they don't have to meet the quarter-end capital requirements. But nonetheless, this shows you how a fine an edge the Chinese economy is right now. Ten seconds left. When? When do we finally get the world agreeing with you, like here it is, the, the slowdown, the crash in the Chinese economy? S sometime within six months, because I don't think they can play it out much further. All right, Gordon Chang actually putting a timeline on it. Thank you very much. Good to have you here, Gordon. Thank you.